Was the Bible written or changed or corrupted by the Illuminati or anyone else? Was it created to control the minds of the masses? The answer to this question is no, and it's probably one of the easiest things in the world to prove. And I will do so in three different ways. Number one, scientifically. Number two, logically or literally. And number three, historically. Scientifically speaking, it's extremely easy to prove because there are more fragments of the New Testament than there are for any text in the history of the world. This is important because they are also from vastly different time periods and were discovered in many different countries. So because of all that, it really means something if all 26,000 or so fragments are in agreement with each other. They're all saying the same thing, other than a few spelling errors and other minor things like that. So this also means that if the Bible was changed, it would be almost the easiest thing on the planet to prove. All you would have to do is to point to some of the older texts and say, at this point, they all said this. And then, after a certain point, they all began to say that. Also, if this was true, you can bet that instead of people just claiming that the Bible was changed, they would simply prove that the Bible was changed. It would be very easy to do. It is also imperative to understand that the Bible is by far the most scrutinized series of texts in the entire world, and that there are many brilliant scholars who really dislike the Bible. And you might be surprised to find that the educated critics of the Bible don't argue things like the Bible was changed by the Vatican. They are much too familiar with the ancient texts to fall for that. With the Old Testament, it's even easier to prove that it wasn't changed. You should know that until very recently, about 1947, the oldest copies of the Old Testament were only about a thousand years old. This was because the Jewish writings were destroyed in 70 AD when Rome destroyed the temple, where most of the writings were stored. These 1,000-year-old writings were called the Masoretic Texts, because a family of scribes called the Masorites owned them. But everything changed in 1947 when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, which dated from around 300 to 100 BC to 100 AD. And among the texts, they found fragments from every book in the Old Testament except for Esther. Modern-day Jewish people held their breath, awaiting to find out if the ancient scribes had faithfully handed down the scriptures during this 1,000-year gap between the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Masoretic Texts. What they found was that an almost flawless preservation of the text, word for word, was handed down. It actually wasn't a huge surprise for the Jewish people that the scribes had done such a good job preserving the text over the thousand years because the ancient scribes took their jobs really, really seriously. In fact, it was said that if they messed up even one word, they would actually scrap the whole thing and start over. It was also said that they would ritually bathe every time they wrote the name of God. Now, I want you to consider the absurdity of claims that people like Francis Bacon changed the Old Testament. Because in order to believe that, you have to believe that Francis Bacon not only changed the Masoretic text, but he also discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls hundreds and hundreds of years before anyone else did, and he crawled in there and changed them also. The thing is, even though the scriptures that we have in English are in English, we can use a concordance to find out what the Hebrew words were, and then compare them to the ancient texts, to find out that there is no way that Francis Bacon or anyone else changed the Bible. Some of you might be thinking at this point, Okay, it wasn't changed. I realize that whoever told me that may not have known what they were talking about. But maybe it was written by them in the first place. And in order to prove this wrong, I'm going to move to the next form of argumentation, which is logically and literally. Let's first look at it literally. And I mean this in the sense that the literature of the Bible is extremely anti-Illuminati and actually gives a blueprint for their defeat. As many of you probably know, the Illuminati or New World Order system is very much one based on occult beliefs. The exact same belief system, down to the specific worship of the same Sumerian and Babylonian gods in exchange for power and control, is the very system that page after page of the Bible is exposing and condemning. So let's look at a few examples. The worship of the god Moloch is a good example. This is something that the Bible says that the kings of the earth were doing. Now, the way to worship Moloch was by sacrificing children primarily. They would do this by heating up the metal hands of the statue of Moloch until they were glowing red and then placing babies on them until they died. This again was being done not by uneducated people, but by the kings and queens. 
This is significant because no one would tell the kings and queens what to do. They were choosing to burn their kids alive as a sacrifice in exchange for power and their offices. More literary examples include when God took Ezekiel and supernaturally showed him what the leaders were doing behind closed doors. He told them to go warn them that God was going to bring judgment on them if they didn't repent. He showed them that the politicians were secretly practicing the occult. He showed them that the worship of Tammuz was going on, which is still a central aspect of the Illuminati religion. And the next thing he showed them was that the secret worship of the sun was going on with the leaders behind closed doors. And so that makes it really hard to believe what I call the zeitgeist version of history. See the movie Zeitgeist Refuted Final Cut for more on that. Because once you read about God's judgment on these that secretly worship the sun, it's pretty difficult to imagine that the Bible was encouraging the worship of the sun. Not to mention that all the things in Zeitgeist are untrue. And again, see the movie that I mentioned, Zeitgeist Refuted Final Cut for more on that. The Bible speaks out against what it calls the secret power of lawlessness in many ways. One of my favorite verses is in Psalm 2, where it says, Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Another reason why it's not logical to think that the Illuminati wants us to read the Bible is that the very Illuminati system itself, which is sometimes represented as a pyramid, uh, is a system that requires certain elements in order to function, which are threatened by the Bible. Those elements are the compartmentalization of information within their own system, that is, that the people at the bottom know less about the agenda than the people above them. And the second aspect is secrecy. The Illuminati is a secret society. Secrecy about their intent, about their identities, about their motives, about the nature of their power. It's all supposed to be a secret or it doesn't work. But the Bible exposes all of their secrets. And not only does it expose what they're doing, but also why they are doing it. And probably most importantly, how they are defeated. And for more on that, see my video, Russ Dizdar, Exorcism, MPD, SRA, The Black Awakening. History shows that the New World Order has literally done everything in its power to keep the Bible from the public. And that brings me to my last form of argumentation, which is historically. It only took a few years after Jesus' death for the Roman emperors to start to see the Bible and Christianity as a threat to the Roman Empire. It was by the time of the Apostle Paul that the Emperor Nero began his infamous attempt at the extermination of Christians. In fact, the Apostle Paul was recorded to have been beheaded during the persecution of Nero. Nero actually used to have Christians dipped in tar and lit on fire to light his garden. Some say this is where the term Roman candle came from. This killing of Christians continued for almost three centuries. It records them being fed to the lions like it was a football game or something. In fact, the Emperor Diocletian, in around 287 to 305, he ordered all copies of the Bible destroyed. He actually was quoted as saying, The Christian religion is destroyed and the worship of the gods is restored. Obviously, he was wrong. So if you think that the emperors of Rome were trying to encourage people to read the Bible or to become Christians so that they can control their mind, you're not considering history at all. After the fall of Rome, it actually got worse. The Roman Catholic Church eventually demonstrated that Rome had never really fallen at all and had simply began ruling under the guise of the church. Rome's same worship of the ancient Babylonian and Sumerian gods continued under different names, being attempted to be merged with true biblical Christianity. The problem this new merger had was that the Bible clearly debunked the idea of popes and worshiping of Mary and the saints and all this stuff. So people that read the Bible immediately saw through the Roman Catholic Church and saw that they were deceiving people about what the Bible said in order to control them. So they did what you would expect them to do. That is, they made the Bible illegal around 1200. And the translations that they did have were all in Latin, so no one understood what the Bible said for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is the time referred to as the Dark Ages. One thing that you will never get from the so-called teachers in the truth movement is that the Inquisitions began because of Bible-believing Christians, and millions and millions of true Christians were tortured in the most ridiculously brutal ways to get them to renounce the Bible. They were often burned alive with the copy of the Bible that they illegally owned. Now let me ask you, 
Does that sound like the actions of a group that wants people to read the Bible? Let's fast forward to the modern day and ask ourselves the question, do you think that the New World Order has any influence on the state schools or the universities? Well, why are they so anti-biblical? Or do you think that they have control over the music industry or the movie industry, TV shows, newspapers? Well, why are they so anti-biblical? And so I hope you will see that the idea that the Illuminati changed the Bible doesn't make any sense. Thanks for your time.